Well, hello everyone. My name is Elena Jaramillo Meza. I am a plant pathology PhD student at UW Madison, and I'm here to talk to you today about the fascinating world of plant viruses as part of um, El Suminario. I'm very excited to share a little bit about these amazing tiny microbes that I get to study every day. So first, I wanted to introduce myself a little bit. I was born in Medellin, Colombia, this beautiful city surrounded by mountains where my heart is. Um, in 2017, uh, after completing my uh, bachelor degree in biological engineering, I came to Madison, Wisconsin to start a PhD in plant pathology. And I spent most of my time doing research in the lab. You can see here a picture um, in the lab in UW Madison that has an amazing view of the lake. Um, and I study viruses that infect plants that all not, although not as famous as animal viruses like polio or SARS coronavirus, they are responsible for huge losses and epidemics in agriculture that are constantly threatening our food production systems. So let's just start with what's a virus. Viruses are very small parasites that come in a lot of different forms. In general, they are composed of genetic material and some proteins that you um, can see here. And they need these proteins and genetic material in order to infect a host and um, complete their replication cycle. Uh, the viral particles are uh, packaged those proteins and genetic materials, and they have to find a, a host cell to infect and hijack the resources of those cells in order to use them in their benefit and, again, complete their replication cycle. Viruses cannot move on their own, they cannot generate their own energy, um, and once they get to the host cell, they hijack all those cell resources, so they are absolutely dependent on the host cell for replication. This is a fragment of, of a video made by the YouTube, YouTube channel in a nutshell that I highly recommend if you want to learn more about viruses or are interested in learning more about this. Um, so viruses are very, very small particles. Just to give you some context for a scale, a human hair is around 4,000 times larger than most viruses. You can see a small virus here, Zika virus, and they're a, just a single human hair is 4,000 times uh, larger than that virus. Um, the vast majority of viruses cannot even be seen with a regular microscope. So in order to observe them, we have to use a more powerful microscopy technique called electron microscopy. Viruses, like I'd say, are, are very diverse, um, but there are things that they all have in common. And we already talked about genetic material. They all, ha all have genetic material and they all wrap that genetic material in a capsid that is made of proteins. And the other property that viruses have is that they all infect a host. Uh, viruses infect all forms of cellular organisms, including animals, plants, uh, bacteria, and fungi. So why do we study viruses? Well, first of all, viruses are everywhere. They are the most abundant biological entities in our planet. planet and like I mentioned, they infect all uh, forms of life. They are the cause of major human and plant diseases. Uh, however, the, most, the more we learn about viruses now, the more we realize that not, all, that not all of viruses cause a disease, and sometimes they are found in hosts not causing, causing any harm, or in, more, in even uh, new cases that we're discovering, they can even be beneficial for the host and can um, provide other characteristics like tolerance to environmental conditions or even uh, more tolerance to, for example, other pathogens. We also need to understand viruses in order to control them. We cannot control something that we don't understand how it works. They're also very useful biotechnological tools because uh, since they mimic, they use all cell resources, they mimic a lot of cellular processes. And so we have discovered a lot of how the cell works by studying viruses. They are also, because they move from one cell to another, uh, uh, delivering genetic material, they are used to, again, as vehicles of, uh, to deliver genetic information, for example, vaccines into cells. Uh, this is a picture of tulips infected with a virus that were very famous in Europe, um, and uh, they were thought to almost cause a huge economic uh, crisis. Virus play, viruses play major roles in global ecology and the evolution of life. In, so in order to understand life and evolution itself, we need to understand viruses and how they work. And if I haven't convinced you by now of why 
we study viruses, we should just study them because they're very cool. You can see here um, an electron uh, microscopy uh, image of a phage. This is a virus that infects bacteria. And I always say this is one of my favorite images in all science because I cannot believe how these um, little machines are formed so perfectly. It's very beautiful. So, like I mentioned, I study viruses that infect plants, and although not as famous as um, animal viruses, I would argue that they are as important, if not more, as they, um, especially now that we're facing climate change. Viruses make up almost half of the pathogens that cause diseases in plants and generate annual losses of more than $30 billion. Um, these, of course, disproportionately affects populations in developing countries where food is already scarce. And these epidemics uh, cause devastating nutritional impacts that are often associated with famine events. Just to mention some examples, we have here cassava mosaic disease, which is caused by a group of viruses. Um, right now, there's an ongoing epidemic of cassava mosaic disease in Africa, and we have half a billion people that rely on cassava for uh, calories. So this epidemic can always lead to uh, famine events. We have another one that is very important to me, especially uh, it's cacao swollen shoot virus. Um, it infects cacao, uh, cacao plants, and there it's threatening cacao crops in West Africa, which produces around 70% of the world cacao supply. And if you love chocolate as much as I do, you understand the seriousness of this. Um, finally, just wanted to mention uh, another historic epidemic of plant viruses, the papaya ring spot virus that almost destroyed the papaya industry in Hawaii in 1990, and it was all, all, only saved by the development of a resistant plant to the virus. Symptoms of viral diseases in plants include yellowing of the leaves, uh, ring patterns of the fruits, like you see here in papaya, malformation of fruits and leaves, and different leaf coloration patterns. So when you go out and see some plants, look out for any of the symptoms to scout for some uh, viruses and become a plant virologist. So what are plant virus researchers studying right now? So we're trying to understand the basic biology of viruses. Um, and with that, I want to highlight the importance of just understanding like natural phenomena. Like I mentioned, um, in order to uh, control viruses, for example, we need to understand them. I was particularly like uh, drawn to science because I am curious and I wanted to understand the world around me and how it works. So if you're curious and if you're passionate about science and like asking, quest asking questions, I urge you to consider science as a future career and explore all the different uh, fields of research that we have right now. Um, so in order to understand the basic biology of viruses, we want to understand how they how viruses work, how they infect a host, what resources do they need, how do they get transmitted, how we can control them, how can we cure them, or how can we prevent diseases, uh, infections to begin with. Um, we also want to design effective and sustainable control strategies. So this could be uh, accomplishing by, for example, breeding or engineering plants that are resistant to viral infections, or we can design antiviral like drugs or compounds that specifically target a virus without harming the cell, in this case, the host, the plant. We can also use modified version of viruses that we know to treat other diseases. As we mentioned, they can use be used as like vehicles or carriers for other molecules. Um, and uh, we can, again, with this design effective and sustainable control strategies. Other thing that uh, researchers in plant virology do often is find new viruses. They're always surveying and hunting for new viruses to see uh, viruses that haven't been described before or viruses that are jumping from one species to the other, like it happens frequently with animal viruses and that become a problem. So we're always needing more plant virology. So if you're interested in this, don't, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, so just to conclude, some reflections too. Plant viruses can be as devastating as animal viruses, if not more. 
In, this is very important because plant health is everyone's health. We need to make sure our crops and our food supply is healthy so that we can feed um, everyone. We need future scientists from a lot of different uh, backgrounds that are interested in studying plant pathogens and studying basic science so that we can fight plant diseases and feed a rapidly growing population. And just to remind you, Basic research, basic research is driven by curiosity. There's an immense value in studying nature just to try to understand it. And technological developments in science are almost always linked to discoveries made by basic research. So we, if you're interested, again, if you're curious, don't, don't um, try, look at science as a possible uh, career for you. So with that, I want to thank uh, my department in my lab um, for giving me a space in a community to conduct my research. Um, here is my email and my Twitter handle. If you ever want to talk about uh, viruses, about research, about science, I would be more than happy to chat. So thank you so much.